All right, guys, good afternoon. My name is Alan with Center Consoles Only, and I have Braden and Matt from Furuno. They're going to walk us through the 450Z, their collaboration with CB, and exactly everything this boat has on it. So thank yeah. you guys very much. Oh, thank you very much for having us. We're thank really you. Excited. Appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. So we're going to walk around. At the moment, we're docking ourselves in position. But during that, maybe can you guys give us an overview real quick? Maybe we can even start with this. Yeah, rear panel, if, uh, if that makes sense. Absolutely, we can start back here. What we've got in the back, aft facing, is one of our 16-inch uh, TZT3s. And this is in a really beneficial spot for your anglers back here. You can be looking at your fish finder, you know, whether it's going to be one of our DFF 3D or it's going to be our 3KW deep impact amplifier that we hmm. have on this vessel. Okay. Um, you know, the anglers can turn around, take a look at it, and actually... If you look back here, oh. we've got a remote hidden away back here as nice. well. So the anglers can actually control this screen completely separate from anything the captain's doing at the helm. Really? So the captain could be up there, you know, looking for birds, doing whatever he's doing, and all your anglers could be back here controlling this screen, watching the bottom machine. Completely separate. Completely separate. That's phenomenal. Absolutely. Uncomfortable. Yeah. You can just sit here and control it. Yeah, you can control you it from right there. Down. Absolutely. Very nice. You know, anything you want to do from that remote, you can do. Um, you know, all the touchscreen features are capable on this remote, even our edge swiping, which is how you get into our overlays and our menus. You can do right from this remote. And this is our MCU-004 okay. remote Very control. Nice. Well, as you guys know, these, these boats are built for tournament fishing. As beautiful and luxurious as it is, it's a serious tournament boat. So a feature like that is huge when you have your team back here doing their thing mm -hmm. and their captain up, up at the helm doing his. So really yeah. nice feature. Mm -hmm. If you give us a second here, we're going to... Yeah, we can even take a look at what's going on in the tower. We're gonna need guys if you can if you can maybe get the lines and help us out. And again, guys, thank you. This is live, so we <laughs> just had a bunch of people on the boat scrambling to get to this thing by three o'clock. Charlie, would you mind getting that line there, please? Sorry. And we're trying to get all this together. All right, so. What else can we talk about as they set this thing up? We don't want to get yeah. in their way. As, as they're throwing lines, trying to get this boat docked up, you know, we can also, you know, let's look at this beautiful tower. Okay. You know, sail fishing, you know, captain's going to be running the boat from the tower. He wants the best vantage point, but he also needs his situational awareness with his bottom machine, his fish finder, his radar, his charts. So we've got a 12-inch PZT3 mm -hmm. up in the tower as well. Wow. That Fantastic. unit shares all the same information that's across the entire network from the dash to this year to this rear unit, but it can also be controlled separately. So he could be looking at a fish finder, you know, he could be looking at the radar, searching for birds, mm -hmm. while your team's down here looking at this fish finder or somebody's at the helm doing what they want to do as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's great to see Furuno doing what they're doing. Actually, I Absolutely. remember years ago, that's all we had on our boat. Yeah. And then we went, you know, recession came across, didn't have a boat mm -hmm. for a while. Um, but yeah, Furuno for, for was always a big deal for us. Yeah, if you're serious yeah. about fishing, you're serious about, you know, catching fish and winning tournaments, you know, we've definitely got the right products for you. What do you say, what would you say are the strong points at Furuno? Like the radar, death finder, like what, what's you know, the... I, I think in the industry, we've always been known for having probably pretty much the best radars and mm -hmm. the best fish finders in the industry. Um, now with the introduction of TZT3 and with uh, version 7 software for TZT2, which we are still running, you know, these are got to be some of the easiest to use units on the market. Really? Anything you want to do is either one button push or one edge swipe away. You know, gone are the days of, you know, needing a manual to operate any piece of electronics on this. Button. Nice. You know, you, you walk up to it. It's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. All right. So, you know, the ease of use is going to be a big selling point. And other things customers need to remember is we're a commercial company. Yes. With a recreational line. So we are going to take our commercial lineage and it bleeds down into our recreational line, you know, okay. for performance and for our reliability and durability of these products. Very nice. All right. Well, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Looking good. Definitely a nice setup up in the tower back yeah. in here, which is something we don't see very often. Yep. Uh, guys, are you guys set up there? Or are we able to kind of creep in? Okay. Excellent. All right, we're going to head up to the helm. Yeah, if you... 
Come on, on in, guys. Side, you want us on that side? Or? Yeah, go ahead and pop in here. I'll stay in the awesome. back so we can yep. uh, let the cameras come in. Mm -hmm. So this is where the brains are yeah. of this 450. Now I mean, let's go through this little by little slowly so everyone can absorb it. Absolutely. Talk about a beautiful command center on this beautiful boat. You know, we're sitting here, you know, behind the helm of this beautiful CV. This has been a great relationship between Furuno and CV so far. Um, but what we're looking at here on the dash is, you know, let's concentrate on these two really big screens here. These are our MU245 touchscreen monitors. Mm -hmm. So these are 24-inch touchscreen monitors. And we have two of them on this vessel. Wow. And they are being powered by our TZT2 black box unit. This black box is basically like having two separate units in one box. So whatever's on that screen, I can have something completely different on this screen. And we can do any screen size you want with this black box. Because don't forget, Fruno was the originator of the black box system. Really? We haven't forgotten what we learned. <laughs> so we can do a 17, we can do a 19, we can do a 24, we can do a 32. We can go up to a 55-foot touchscreen if somebody wanted to. They got the big enough boat. Really? Of course, we've seen a few of those here around Ride the Fitch, So. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know. But, yes, yeah, so we have the TZT2BB is powering these two big monitors here. Then we have another 16-inch TZT3 in the middle. And with our new version 7 software for the TZT2 system, this is a seamless integration. They're going to all work exactly the same. The presentation and the user interface are going to be exactly the same across the 2BB and the TZT3 line. Um, if we want to take a look at this starboard screen, what we have being displayed is we are showing our quad screen, and we are showing four different fish finder presentations on this screen. Oh, wow. So what we're looking at is... We have our DFF 3D, which is our multi-beam sonar, which is capable of showing us our 3D sounder history. We have our side scan, and we have our triple beam fish finder. Now, this DFF 3D is going to shoot a beam at 120 degrees off the face of the transducer. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to see really far out to the sides, but we can also see upwards of depths over 600 feet deep with this 3D. Really? So if you're doing some bottom fishing, you know, whether you're in 200 or 300 or out to 500 or 600 feet, you're going to have a lot of situational awareness of what is around the boat. Where are the fish around the boat? Where is the structure? So that's really going to make a difference for when you're trying to fish and you're trying to, you know, see what's around you, you know, having the ability to do so that. So you're basically DFF3D. mapping out the bottom in 3D. And as you mm -hmm. overlay and overlap a singular area, it's going to continue growing that map. Is that what you're doing or? Well, you know, in, in a future software update, you know, with TZT3, our hope is to be able to take this 3D map here that we're generating and mm -hmm. overlay that onto our chart. Okay. So you can, in a sense, create your own detailed charts this way. You know, right. but that's, that's our hope at a future software update, probably coming pretty soon. But um, what it's going to do is it's going to keep generating this image, but I can manipulate it. I can zoom in on it. And I can make it do anything I want to do. And that's going to be nice because I can see where fish are on this 3D world. I can see if they're off to the left or I can see if they're off to the right side of the boat as well. And then you have your side scan here. And then the triple beam fish finder is showing us 40 degrees under the boat, 40 degrees to port, and 40 degrees to starboard. So we're getting a lot of information on this triple beam fish finder in a presentation that we're used to, you know, we're used to looking at, used to reading. Right. So... Um, yeah, essentially what it is, it's it's four transducers in one application, in yeah. one housing. Yep, oh, it okay. is. Yeah, Matt's absolutely correct. When you, you know, this 3D, you know, has the ability to give you four different presentations. But, you know, Ariel, you know, they're going to be doing some offshore fishing in this boat. So he also has his 3KW chart being displayed on here as well. So this is coming from our deep impact amplifier box. So this is outputting 3KW of power and running through one of our big Airmar transducers. And this is going to be good to, you know, however many thousands of feet, you know, aerial needs fishing. If they get into doing some deep dropping, some sword fishing, mm -hmm. you know, this deep impact box is going to really do it for them. And that's yeah, incredible. Gonna... You're almost cheating at this point with, with all of this technology. And, and if you wanted to, you could even bump that up to 10 kilowatts with a BT5 booster box. Really? Yeah, we, okay. we do have a really big 10KW um, transducer if someone wants to get a little crazy. Wow. <laughs> they want to cook the fish on the way up. Yeah. They come a uh, fried fish stick somewhere. Yeah, like yeah. Exactly. We'll, we'll call that fried fish mode. <laughs> so, but um, very nice. You know, also part of this. Let's not forget 
you know, first and foremost, these are a chart plotter. So we can go to our chart page here and you can see, you know, if we wanted to do anything here, we're showing the Seymour charts are being overlaid on the chart plotter here. Oh, okay. But if I wanted to change any of that, I just swipe up from the bottom and here is all my overlays okay. that I need to interact with on my chart. Like we said, one swipe away, it's super easy. Let's say I just wanted to look at my CMAP charts and I wanted to turn off Seymour. Doesn't get much easier than that. One no. swipe away for all of that. So Very smooth. Yep, yeah, the absolutely. user interface and, and having these edge swipes, it really, you, you never have to take your eyes off of the screen to go back into home, go back into settings, go back into parameters that, you know, would take you, you know, longer than the average, the average end user is used to. Yeah. So it's just a one, like Braden uh, demonstrated, one simple edge swipe and everything is right there at the touch of your fingers. Yeah. Same thing on your fish finder page. We swipe up. And here's all the information I'm going to need to adjust. Right well, I see with, the, with these electronics, I mean, you can have all the money in the world, have the greatest electronics from mm -hmm. Peruno that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But if a company comes out with something that's just complicated and it takes yep. 15 steps to get from A to mm -hmm. B, you know, most people are not going to utilize 90% of the functionality of the, of the unit. Right, so right. having Absolutely. it simple, just like the iPhone did, you know, uh, exactly, that's exactly I mean, what it is. Yep. Stupid, simple. And. That's Good. how people can actually maximize the functionality of these things. You know, that was our biggest goal between TZT2 and TZT3 was ease of use. Yeah. You know, we paid attention to what customers were saying. We paid attention to what captains are saying. We tried to listen to what they were telling us and implement it into these into this user interface. Mm -hmm. You know, it took a lot of work. You know, I feel I feel like we've got a good product here, but we're going to we're going to keep developing. We're not going to stop here. We're going to keep improving it. So, awesome. Great but, to hear. But, you know, to talk about what else is still on this boat, yeah. Hmm. Let's talk about the radar for a second. So what we have on this boat is our DRS 25A NXT. This is a 200 watt solid state open array radar. It is gonna be one of the most powerful solid state open array radars on the market. Wow. Now, if you wanna talk about bird finding ability, you know, this is where it's gonna be. You know, this is gonna be one of the most powerful radars you can get to be able to find birds, you know, um, also, what's going to be nice is I'm going to spin this radar up here for a second. We don't have to worry about anything. It's a solid state <laughs> radar. So what I want to be able to show you is on these solid state radars, we also have what's called target analyzer mode. And this is really cool. You're talking about ease of use and being out on the boat and not having to worry about stuff. If I swipe up here, I turn on my target analyzer mode. What's going to happen is all my targets around me are now going to turn green. But if I have an object that is closing in on me at greater than three knots, mm -hmm. it's now going to turn red. Oh, really? So at a glance, I have exceptional situational awareness. So I can look wow. up, and there's a red target right there. You know, we're seeing him coming at us, so we know that that target is inbound on our position. That's incredible. So, yeah, and as, as you guys can see, you know, we're obviously sitting still, but we've tested this target analyzer at going in upwards of speeds of 70 miles an hour, and it gives you the same target representation as if we were sitting still like we are right now. Yeah, really cool. That's true what you're saying. If everything is green or everything's red, no one's going to notice if there's an object coming at them. Absolutely. Right. You know, any sort of dangerous speeds. If you amplify it in a way, at least it yeah, creates all, that awareness. You know, being that these are Doppler radars, it gives us a, the ability to give that presentation to the customer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's all about ease of use. It's all about safety. You know, when you're serious about your safety and you're out on the water. I mean, me and Matt were just talking to a customer. They run 200 miles out in the Gulf to go fishing. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he's yeah. sitting out there all night. He can't have his radar not working or no. working well. You know, he needs to know if there's a vessel coming in at him. Sure. So, you know, that's also very nice. But, you know, we talked about finding birds <laughs> earlier. We got bird mode. Doesn't get much simpler than this. No way. You know, we put it on calm, you know. Radar switches over into a bird mode. You know, we got a lot of rain and clouds around us right now, so we're going to pick up a lot of that. But we have a calm, a moderate, and a rough, depending on your sea conditions. So do you have to adjust, like, the gain or anything? or just we don't, Everything's auto. We don't really? have to touch a thing. We just swipe up and awesome. put it in bird mode. You know, I used to always think that I could, uh, I could tune a radar really well to find birds. Well, <laughs> software engineers have found a way to do it better. Yeah. <laughs> so... You know, if a computer can, making... uh, can, can nail it down, it's most likely going to be better than we can do ourselves. Exactly I, right. I remember doing the same thing, trying to play with it, seeing, yeah. ah, maybe I'll pick up something when you go see what you, there's nothing there. You know? Yeah. So, you know, having it be all, all automatic and all super easy is very nice. Um, but if you do want to play with the radar and you do want to tune on it a little bit, all you have to do is we have our data bar here. I just take it out of automatic. I put it in manual and I can sit here and I can adjust my radar. I can adjust what I want to do to the game right here without never leaving my radar screen. Mm -hmm. 
So, or I can just leave it right there in automatic. I think we're going to find that automatic is going to do really well for a lot of people. But we do have the ability. That's one thing we really tried to do was make it out of the box, automatic, everything, whether it's radar or fish finders or the chart plotter, make it really easy and work well. But, um, you know, we also have the customization there. Yeah. So. All right. Yep. And then well, lastly. Work our way over here. What do we got? These are just basically three different presentations of everything we're show you're showing us here. You yeah, we're just running through. We just have it on three different screen sizes. Um, you know, Ariel wanted to keep this unit in the dash, and we've seen he's been running it on his engine gauges here quite a oh, bit. Oh, okay. So, you know, we yeah. can do a full presentation on engine gauges, on, you know, speed over ground. We got all four engines on here. You know, very simple, very clean presentation. Yeah, it's very nice how he has gauges. it set up. And, I mean, obviously this is uh, top of the totem pole, I imagine. Correct. What you guys offer. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, this is going to be about top of the line, you know, in our recreational line for what we offer. You know, it's, um, you know, you can't, this is a really nice setup for this boat. Here. Yeah, yeah. No, so, it seems perfect. The um, screens are beautiful, crisp mm -hmm. and clean, super sharp. Yes, yeah. these are new IPS displays that have a polarizing filter in them, so you can pretty much view them from any angle, night yeah. or day. Really? Yep. yep. No glare? No glare. Nothing. You can see them any you know any time of day, any sunlight, you're going to be able to see these screens. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. We also have um, on here, uh, lastly, one of our newer products. It's our SCX-20 satellite compass. And what that is, is that is mounted up on the roof of the boat, and it's about the size you know, of an old VHF tape. Mm -hmm. VHS tape, and what that is is that is going to be your GPS antenna. It's also going to be your heading sensor for your autopilot, and it's going to offer sub-degree accuracy of heading. And what also it's going to do, if you look at the data screen um, over here on this port screen, we see the roll and the pitch. So okay. the satellite compass can compensate for roll and pitch of the boat. So when you're out in rough weather and you've seen the bottom, you know, doing this rolling because the boat's moving up and down. That satellite compass is going to offer heave compensation. No oh, way. Yeah. <laughs> so you're looking for bottom detail. Being able to have that heave compensation, you know, is really going to be nice. That's, a, so, that's incredible. Yeah. And, and it makes it, the autopilot an extremely easy install as well. Yeah, I was just going to say, from an installation perspective, it's super easy. We offer two models, an SCX-20, which is a NEMA 2000 version, and an SCX-21, which is a NEMA 0183. Okay. Yeah. So, And then also autopilot-wise, we did our NavPilot 300 autopilot on this boat it is completely compatible with any drive-by wire system or any kind of hydraulic steering for an outboard boat um, we can also do some small inboard boats with it but um, it's going to integrate and function very seamless with this system i can drop a waypoint and i can tell the autopilot to navigate and it's going to drive me right to that waypoint very nice so. let me ask you a question like when it comes to actually using these products what do you guys do to i guess teach your clientele mm -hmm. what do you guys offer what do you is, is there something out there that can get someone okay we want to go ahead and put this package on there mm -hmm. now i want to be taught how to use it is there are there videos out there do you offer some sort there, of there definitely or? there definitely are some videos there, out there. there's videos on our website we also have an internal e-guide on the home setting so if, if a customer doesn't have the installation or i should say operator's manual with them they oh. can simply click that e-guide and type and search for any anything that they need to know oh, on so the system. If you're struggling right here on the boat, you can search exactly. it. Yep. Like exactly. Googling it and, and yeah, figure it out. It's exactly. like Google through the manual. That's a good idea. Yep. Yeah. You know, first and foremost, it's, it's if you're working with a dealer, it's going to start there with our dealer base. You know, we've got some of the best dealers in the, you know, in the country and in the world, right, okay. as a matter of fact. You know, they're going to work with you. They're going to give you an orientation on the products. But also, um, if you check out our Furuno Connection series, that's on our YouTube page. We just, um, in the middle of releasing season two right now, um, we did a head-to-head -head competition, you know, head-to-head -head comparison with um, everybody in the market. So we're not going to name any brands that we tested, but, you know, they're all there. <laughs> and, um, you know, we did head-to-head -head on how to use the chart plotter. How does the radar perform? How does the fish finder perform? You know, simple things like how do you enter a waypoint? How do yeah. you go from north up to course up? Yeah. We literally covered it all. Yeah, and, and it was a completely unbiased test. Everything was out of the box, yeah. installed. No, nothing was changed in the settings. It was all an auto feature. Yeah. So not only is the customer going to be able to get reassured in the product that they bought because they're going to see how great it operates, but they can also use that as a fantastic tutorial video. Yeah, that's yes. an yeah. excellent idea. So, Honestly, I've never seen. And one other feature here is when you boot these screens up, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to show you what the welcome screen looks like. I'm going to bring it up here. 
show welcome screen. When you boot these screens up, this is what you will first see. So we can either go into Let's Navigate or I have a tutorial video and I can say start the tour. And what's going to happen is the unit is now going to run through about a seven minute video and it's hmm. going to show you how to do everything. Oh, really? Yes. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. So if you get on the boat for the first time, run that little video. It's going to show you how to edit pages, how to do anything you want to do on these units. Oh, that's that because we get the questions pretty often. Yeah. Hey, how do you do this? How do you do this? And mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we don't know how to. We're not the experts <laughs> yeah. at this by any means uh, of the word. So, you know, trying to answer that question, especially mm -hmm. with Faruno here saying, hey, you, you, you set it up that you can you can troubleshoot it yourself. Mm -hmm. Find the answers you need just right in the unit is correct. Awesome. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all the answers are right here in front of you. The touch of your fingers, you know, with the tutorial video, the e-guide. Check out some videos on YouTube once you're done watching this. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We went through quite a bit of it today. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Right. Absolutely have. So, but yeah, well, that's, you know, that's going to kind of round out what the equipment that's on this boat. You know, we've, it's pretty decked I think out. You, I, think you, I, think you, I think you covered just about everything. <laughs> Fish yeah. finder wise, fish finder, you know, 3D radar. This ready, this boat's ready to go tournament fishing. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're going to do a few of them, from what I hear. That's what yeah. I hear. But maybe we get lucky and get get to tag along on one or two. Yeah, I'm hoping I can love to uh, see this stuff. This stuff in action. Yeah, yeah. We actually just they just uh, unleashed the uh, NEMA 2000 awards, and uh, we won oh, radar, yeah. radar of the year, um, Sat Compass of the year, SCX 20, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Depth Sound of the year, DFF 3D, really? and um, uh, uh, I guess a special equipment category for our DIFF AMP, awesome. our Deep Impact. Awesome. First yep. that, so. Congratulations. Yeah, we've Thank had a you. long Clean lineage of, yeah. uh, of NEMO awards, and we're proud of them. Yeah. We're proud of the work we do and trying to bring a, you know, bring an easy-to-use, very reliable product to the customer. Awesome. Well, it seems so. like you, you guys have, hey, you've always been a great product, but you've come a long way from what I remember seeing. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it in a while, so I'm glad I was able to dive in a little bit deeper with you guys and hopefully mm -hmm. absolutely we can relay a lot of this to to our viewers and you know i think we ha don't have anything else i want to thank you guys for taking the time first off oh yeah oh, thank, thank you, you yeah. so much I, for thank having you. us i think it's we have a great. question i just got through my nifty little earpiece here <laughs> <laughs> what does the battery consumption look like with these units so they're actually going to be pretty pretty low for these units um you know, when you're running two big monitors like this, you know, you're going to need a little bit of power to, you know, to run them. But if you look at just like a TZT 316, I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but um, they're very, uh, very power efficient. Yes. You know, we're running, you know, all these screens are, you know, brand new, very power efficient screens. And especially if you look at like the radars as well, being a solid state radar, mm. you know, there's no warm up time. There's no magnetron to power. So very oh. power efficient, very powerful power efficient units nice but, amazing um, where the technology has come yeah but if whoever asked that question if they want to uh you know send fruno usa an email and i'm sure it'll find its way to me there and you go. i'd be more than happy to get those details for them okay yep. definitely appreciate that yep absolutely yep. we got any more questions guys all right well i want to thank you guys again uh, thank great you very much thank that, you very much pleasure. appreciate it yeah great to learn a little more about furuno and i'm mm -hmm. sure we're going to be seeing a lot more of this oh wait to see what we have down the road you're going to be very excited oh can you can you give us any hints or no uh well <laughs> you know i'm gonna well you will see with uh with our new software version which is going to be v2 for tzt3 we're going to have some really really cool apps um, yeah. For our PBG data, we're going to be able to continuously record this, like Braden mentioned earlier. Um, and we also have a really, really cool Fishit app, hmm. um, which is a, it's a drift mode app that enables you to set a point, drift over that mark, and then the GPS automatically, uh, you know, kind of senses which, what, you know, which way the tide is pushing the boat. It's going to give you a second point to go back to, and every single time you drift over that point, it, it will be center line in the vessel. Really? And we are working, yes, the, wow. that software is in beta version right now. Yeah, fish for, beware. For your deep dropping guys, <laughs> yeah. guys that want to sort yeah. fish. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, definitely. We're going to also, we're going to expand upon the TZT3 line, you know, for some smaller vessels as well. Okay. Um, you know, we're going to look at a few smaller screens, but we're just going to keep innovating and we're going to keep, you know, keep improving the software on the You bet it. We actually have another question. Go ahead. Yep. Is there a hold position to avoid anchoring while using the motors? So that is going to be um, dependent on the motors. So we are going to be navigation. We're going to be fish finding. We are not going to control the thrust of the motors at all. Okay. Um, what we can do with our autopilot, though, is we can do what we call sabiki mode. And what that is, basically, it's autopilot in reverse. 
So if I wanted to back up to a channel marker to speaky up some goggle eyes or whatever we want to try and do, mm -hmm. I can turn the autopilot in speaky mode and all I have to do is use my throttles to keep my distance from that marker. The autopilot is going to keep the correct heading. Oh, so okay. while I can't control the motors from the MFD, mm -hmm. I can control the heading of the boat and use just a bump in and out of gear in sabiki mode. That's on the nice. Autopilot. That's nice. Definitely the bait fishing. Yeah. That's a nice feature to have. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Anything else, guys? All clear. Well, thank you again, guys. Definitely appreciate oh, thank it. You thank much. you very much. Look forward so much. to learning a lot more about Furuno, and hopefully we get we'll sneak on a fishing trip with these guys. So yeah, we're going we to have to stow away in a hatch or something. <laughs> like that. Yeah, you, right? We can all fit in, same, <laughs> in one hatch. Find one. <laughs> there's, there's plenty of them on here. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are from here jumping on the 322, and I believe that's happening at 4 p.m., so make sure you tune in for that. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.